when I was schooling here, I realized my lifestyle was more than my my income. <laughs> Welcome to Cocktails Over Fashion. Thank you so much. Stop it, stop it. No, continue. Um, yeah, I'm big on us building what we have here on the yeah. continent. Let's just do our thing. Do it so well that others just look to us like, wow. Or, yeah. or if we gain even more attention because a duo, you know, spotlighted one thing or the other from here. When they want the authentic, like, African aesthetic or, oh, but what else is there on the continent? We have solid brands that show up and show out. I was very inspired by this idea that you could take business and philanthropy and blend them together and create something called a social enterprise. When I was starting out, a lot of people were producing in England, spending so much on, like, production. Some of my friends were producing in China, getting fabrics from India, and I was like... But that doesn't make any sense. We're here. I do know that when I when I wear African print or African fabric mm-hmm. as a half African woman, I feel so like there's there's just something electric in my body. <laughs> Sustainable means it can be sustained. Like it means you can keep doing it. Yeah. If you want to keep doing this, you have to be sustainable, like on a most basic level. Uh, at a certain point, we're like, okay, we need more control of the production of the fabric. And batik was that for us. It was something that we could, like, guarantee that we would have. A lot of them are not taking risks. They're stuck in a box. So they've seen people, you know, making money from what they're selling or design, and they feel like they need to, you know, get a bit of that. But I mean, if a lot of businesses employed some more practices that really looked at, I suppose, not just their bottom line, but factored in their environmental and their human input a little bit more, then there's, you know, you might be making a little bit less money a year, or you, you know, you might there might be some more teething issues in the initial phases, but ultimately you can create like a sustainable. I feel, I believe, that you can, can create a sustainable business model based on those principles. How do you think that we can empower Africans to buy more African? Mm. <laughs> Your brand is all female. I mean, it's female-led, right? Yeah. Your entire... Yes. Thank you. Can we, can we just have a round of applause? I started as a science student, so I was in a science class studying physics and chemistry, studying all of these things, elective mass. And then one day I woke up, I was like, Charlie, <laughs> this thing is not for me. Like, because I'm like, I'm studying chemistry and half of my book is full of like illustration. It takes a village. It takes, it takes a, village. a village. So all this, oh, I am the designer. You know how people are very, like, I want to be the big shot. I want to be the face of everything. I'm the big shot designer. You actually need a solid team. I don't think we are collaborating enough to make the industry right. Be yourself. The world will just adjust some way, somehow. And also you, you're earning money and it's your money yes, yes. and you can provide for your family I can, I can and everything. you can go home oh, wait, and be like, yo, I'm not, doing it. Not only provide, but Felicia is a breadwinner in the family. Obviously. <laughs> we are situated in a place where the conversation about value and cloth is super rich. Like there is a history in this place where we are of fabric being money right? Fabric used to be a currency here, and it still is in many ways. And we said fashion could rise, and we could focus on the creative and the clothing, and if you make a purchase and you buy the clothing, then you immediately start to interact and impact an entire value chain of people that are doing work without focusing on the sad story, but you can just focus on the product, but buy something that, you know, impacts the value chain. No, I think it's important to not box ourselves. Um, also because this whole definition of what African fashion or African design is, is very weird to me. You know, it kind of stereotypes us all the time. And I wouldn't like for our creatives to be thinking that way, that we have to represent Africa with a certain stereotypical look. But this space was also created by over 40 artisans from the continent of Africa and the diaspora. And it's amazing from the art on the walls to like the seats. You're, some of you are sitting on kente that's like 120 years old, silk kente. This place is amazing and it's trying to promote African excellence. So inspiring and motivating and inspirational. Yeah.